Hi everyone, my name is Joseph, and today I want to discuss The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, Episode 5, Become. So, <laughs> this is the end of the last previous title, What We Become. So, What We was Episode 4, and Become is Episode 5. So, I've been really enjoying The Ones Who Live uh, so far, but with Episode 5, I'd say that's where some of the typical... Episode 5 really felt for me. I mentioned this a little bit, how Episode 4 had elements of the traditional Walking Dead main series. It had that feeling. For me, Episode 5 really leaned into that feeling even more. On the previous episode, I talked about how uh, what we reminded me of the episodes with uh, from the main series when Rick was individually with Michonne and the other separate episode when Rick was individually with Darrow. Um, that episode uh, really gave off more elements of the Darrow episode rather than the Michonne episode. Essentially for me, it was just a little bit too silly. And that theme continues a little bit with episode 5 at the start um, where it seems like Rick and Michonne... Again, spoilers, everyone hasn't seen it, but it seems like Rick and Michonne are having too much of a positive a streak going on. Everything's going their way, and they're really taking this in stride as well, uh, having a lot of fun while they're getting to their destination. And um, while doing so, they discover that they are going to encounter another group. And honestly, even though this was a minor in, in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, interaction between Rick and Michonne and this new group, I really enjoyed it because it showed the different mindsets that Rick and Michonne have. Um, Michonne... Uh, was willing to help this strange random group, um, but she revokes that assistance after this group draws a gun on Rick and Michonne. <laughs> right, so a good deed is done and this group tries to uh, take advantage of that good deed. Rick and Michonne are able to defend themselves and uh, put the table back on their side, put the table, put uh, the bargaining chips back on their side. And at that point, Michonne says, let's take back the food that we gave them and even Rick's like oh really I'm, I'm a bit shocked about that I thought that was really cool and I was happy that Michonne did that I actually thought that her character was going to let the uh, group keep the food but even I myself was on Michonne's side thinking to myself no uh, you try to do something good in this group instead of being grateful not even grateful but thankful uh, especially during this post-apocalyptic time uh, they try to take further advantage of that uh, of that good deed so that was a really cool little scene for the most part I would say that this episode starts off like the Daryl episode but it starts shifting over to the way that I feel about the Rick and Michonne episode from the Walking Dead main series uh, um, essentially what I'm trying to say is that this episode did feel a bit more grounded for me personally especially compared to the last episode the way that it was moving and going forward um, what I also appreciated about it though as well is the fact that there's actually a character that's introduced from the main series well all these characters are from the main series, right? Rick, Michonne, and uh, Jadis. Uh, but another character from the main series, and that's Father Gabriel. It was actually quite shocking to see Father Gabriel. Uh, but after I got over that shock, there was a little bit of disappointment, I won't lie. But after I got over oh, disappointment, not because I don't like Father Gabriel. I do like his character. Um, disappointment just because I was hoping it would be Morgan. <laughs> But how would that make any sense, right? With that being said, though, again, after I got over my disappointment, after I got over my own expectations, I came to really appreciate and enjoy um, Father Gabriel being back in the show. Essentially, through flashbacks, it was established that Jadis was maintaining her relationship with Father Gabriel, despite Jadis working with the CRM. And this actually covers up a couple, well, maybe not a couple, but at least one minor plot hole, where in the main series, there's an episode, and it's season 10, I believe, where um, Father Gabriel looks up to the sky and he actually hears a helicopter. And he tells none of the other group about this uh, helicopter <laughs> that just flew over. I remember at the time a lot of people were like, a lot of people were, were like, excuse me, a lot of people were discussing how, well, what happened, Father Gabriel? That's such an interesting detail. How often do you see helicopters in the skies, especially in the Walking Dead universe? And he kept them to himself. And now it's starting to make a bit more sense. He kept it to himself because he knew that was Jadis. It was either probably Jadis leaving the... Uh, well, actually, no, I, from what I recall, I believe it was nighttime, so he was probably just aware that it was her group. Maybe she thought that she was in the helicopter doing her own thing, or he just knew that the helicopter belonged to her group. Um, at the end of the episode, uh, it gets revealed um, that Jadis enlists the assistance of the group that went against Rick and Michonne, but of course Rick and Michonne are able to defend themselves. And this, So, although I said it, it went back to the whole Rick and Michonne uh, feeling 
uh, from the main series. There is a part in this episode and become uh, specifically when Rick and Michonne are held hostage or are captive under Jadis. That part felt a little bit going back towards the Rick and Daryl episode for me. That's uh, because it looked like Jadis had the complete upper hand, yet somehow Rick and Michonne were able to get away. So <laughs> that was a little bit too much plot armor. I think this goes back to the pacing issue. Since there was only six episodes, the writers really felt like they had to go through the main parts of the story while not giving as much interaction or detail with the minor parts of the story. Uh, so rather than showing uh, Jadis capturing Rick and Michonne in a different method, one by one, they did it all at once because, again, of the time constraint that the show is under. Uh, but despite that, I, I did appreciate the episode as a whole, especially with the way that it ends. I felt really bad for Jadis, especially after watching World Beyond. Watching World Beyond <laughs> helped me to appreciate Jadis' character even more. And I felt really bad for her. I empathize with it because at the end, she states that she had wished she had stayed an artist. And I believe she had said that because, I mean, when she dies, essentially she has the idea that her death was neutral. I don't want to say that her death was for nothing because I don't believe that. Um, she was she believed supposedly in the mission of the CRM to be the light of the world. But at the end of the day, um, was she appreciated the most out of life? Was she uh, was most excited for, I would say, not the most excited for, but the, the position that she was most comfortable in, there we go, was when she was an artist, when she was also a slash leader of the garbage group, right? Because one must forget she was doing her art while on that uh, group. And also when the uh, main group accepted Jadis into the Alexandria and the Hilltop as well. But we could probably deduce that before the apocalypse occurred, that Jadis was probably an artist and practicing an art in that time too. Um, and so she says that she, she regrets that she wasn't still an artist. She hadn't remained an artist. She is not dying as an artist. And I believe she also says that because she that was what her passion was for, but also because of what Michonne tells Jadis. Uh, Michonne tells Jadis that uh, Jadis asks, um, just go, go back home, but please leave the CRM alone. And Michonne says, no. <laughs> she says, no, we're going to destroy essentially the CRM. Even Rick, it looked like Rick was going to say, yes, we'll do that. But then Michonne in interjects and cuts off Rick. And uh, I've only seen the episode once. This time I've seen the other ones twice. Uh, I, when my rewatch, I want to pay attention to Rick's face. And see if he, to me, he looked a little bit shocked that Michonne stopped him and said, no, we're going to destroy the CRM. So, and for me, that made Jadis a little bit crestfallen. And I don't blame her because, again, she was working with this group because she did, even if she didn't fully believe in the message that the CRM was trying to do, I think she was able to subconsciously trick herself into believing that message, but not for a negative way, but a positive way. Um, and here's Michonne saying that, no, we're going to change everything that you were trying to do. So I think that's why Jada says, I, I regret not being, I regret not dying an artist because she realizes that her death is going to be neutral. If Jadis, I mean, Jada, if Michonne and Rick succeed, then the CRM will be completely destroyed. And I know some might be thinking to themselves, well, Joseph, it's a good thing for the CRM to be destroyed. They're a horrible group of people. And I would agree with that. But again, as I've been saying in my previous episodes, it's specifically the CRM and not even the full military too. It's those who are in power and empower specific groups. Um, and it's those individuals who are really corrupting the military portion, but the civilian portion, the CR, the C uh, Civil Republic, uh, if they were allowed to integrate with the CRM, maybe they wouldn't be interacting. The military itself wouldn't be doing their activities the way that they currently are. So I believe in, rather than destroying the CRM, there needs to be a reform of some kind. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, it's looking like the next episode, the last episode, we're going to get all the pieces down on one uh, board or one board. Uh, one knows what I'm trying to say. The meeting is going to occur. All the higher, higher level ups of the CRM is going to be at this compound that uh, Thorin and Rick has been working on. And Rick and Michonne are going back to the complex because they had to get the, uh, the, 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 the intel about Alexandria from Jadis' room. So the next episode will be the last one. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so far I've been saying, uh, would I recommend this episode? Yes, I, I would still recommend this episode. But this time, in the previous episodes I've been saying, episode, excuse me, in the previous videos I've been saying, I would recommend this for both viewers and, excuse me, for both Walking Dead fans and non-Walking Dead fans because the story felt more like a, romance, a romantic story rather than a Walking Dead story. But with the uh, inclusion of Father Gabriel, I would say at this point, uh, can one still watch the show without watching the main series? I would say yes, but obviously with Father Gabriel's interaction, one is going to miss that emotional connection. And they might even consider Father Gabriel to be a fearless character. But hopefully one won't think that they haven't seen The Walking Dead. Because I would argue that Father Gabriel was needed to show how Jadis, if, it was up to her left, if she was up to her own devices, she would not have chosen the CRM path. 
but she was kind of led down that path through 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 the circumstances that she thought uh, she couldn't have any other control. In other, in, in other words, no other uh, route forward. So she went with the CRM. So I do believe Father Gabriel's story was necessary in order to complete Jesus' arc. Um, but again, it's going to be much more impactful impactful for those who saw the show. Excuse me, I can't don't know why I can't speak right now. It's going to be much more impactful for those who saw the show versus those who didn't watch the show. So would I recommend this episode? Yes, I would. But for the non-viewers, just be aware that Father Gabriel... Uh, he's from the main show, but he's necessary uh, to fully explore Genesis' uh, character arc. So, so thank you so much for watching, everyone. I do appreciate it. Uh, are you watching The Ones Who Live Still? Are you enjoying the quality so far? I would say for me personally, I think the first three episodes are probably the best ones. Episode four is where things started wavering a little bit. Not in terms of my enjoyment or in quality, but I still, do en I still did enjoy it. Started feeling more like traditional Walking Dead though, especially the later seasons. And now with this episode, it went back from feeling like non-traditional Walking Dead and traditional Walking Dead, kind of tittering between the both. So uh, we'll see what happens with the last episode. And um, uh, again, I haven't really seen it. I am going to rewatch the last episode because uh, I think I, I need to rewatch it. So <laughs> I'll leave it off as that, with that. With that being said, uh, I will say I did enjoy the season finale or the series finale, excuse me. Um, but there were some nitpicks I do want to discuss, but that will be for that video specifically. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it. Uh, at this point, if you're, let me, I do have a quick question. If your favorite character was Michonne at this point, is she still your favorite character or are you wavering towards Rick now? And the opposite, if your favorite character was Rick at the start of the show, are you still a fan of Rick or are you kind of going towards Michonne's side now? I personally started the show as a huge fan of Rick and towards the end of the show, uh, I am still uh, on Team Rick, uh, but I definitely do see Michonne's point of view as well. And uh, Michonne started really impressing me with her character arc as well. So uh, I enjoyed both Rick and Michonne's character at the start of The Ones Who Live. But at this point, um, I have both more respect for both characters. And my love for Michonne has definitely increased, even if she could be a little bit stubborn. But it's not her fault. It's also Rick's fault for not communicating with her. So... <laughs> It's not entirely Michonne's spot, right? But again, that would be a discussion for uh, the whole season as a whole. Again, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Have a great day and, uh, and take care. Oh, my cat came back up here at the end. Uh, should we ask her, who's your favorite, Rick or Michonne? Let's see. Oh, she says she loves both. <laughs> oh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> that was a silly joke. Uh, but I'm not going to lie. Uh, me saying she um, that she says she loves both was a quick change at the end i was gonna say oh she says that she's a huge fan of rick as well I, i'm really biased towards rick <laughs> i think that kind of shows anyways he's just my favorite character again thank you so much for watching everyone take care